Well, good morning, everyone. Thomas Montgomery here. We get together most weekday mornings at 8 o'clock Central, talk about tips, strategies, share success stories, and to support each of you. Today, we're going to go through the comparison sheet that should be shared on my screen. And in advance of today's training, Zoom training, I actually sent this out to each of you so you would have it uh, in your email inbox. So what's the big picture? The big picture is that we work together to help entrepreneurs, small business owners, have improved financial literacy and increased access to capital. There are two primary resources that we have to help them accomplish that, both of which generates great income for you. So they're, they're, everyone wins. Small business gets funding, you earn a great income. For most of you, it's a side income, that's fine, but it's, it's it still should be meaningful if you're applying yourself. So the comparison sheet today we're gonna to go through, we're going to just ensure that everyone's crystal clear on the differences. I've heard kind of informal feedback from some of you, a little bit of confusion, and we don't want confusion because what happens when we're confused? We're less likely to take action, so you're less likely to be enrolling clients, so your income decreases, and you might misrepresent relevant information. So let's go through it. I'm going to make it larger, but again, you all should have it in your inbox I sent to you yesterday. Let's, let's read through the left narrative, and then we'll spend some time on the graph that compares different attributes. And again, if you want an editable version of this, we're more than happy to provide it. And then, of course, you could change the call to action. I, I should mention, each of you should have your landing page now. If not, be sure to follow up with this. Having a landing page to drive your prospects to is very effective. It's a best practice. And now we provide those for free. All right, so let's start getting familiar with this funding program resource comparison sheet primarily meant for you, could be used with clients, but I'll talk about maybe why you don't want to use it with clients here in a minute. But let's let's make sure you and I are on the same page. So the question is, do you need capital to start or grow a business? I think you and I would agree, many, not all, but many small business owners would not only say yes, they would say, hell yes, they need money to start or grow. So the problem is most small business owners want to end the conversation there and say, just give me money, just get me money. But what do you and I know? That is financial illiteracy, right? You don't just want money. You don't just need money. You need to qualify for the funding that you're applying for. And that's what we talk about in the next paragraph. The key to getting funding is to be qualified. We then introduce that there are two grant subsidized programs to help pre-formation and early stage businesses get money. The comparison grid, of course, highlights two resources. Now you might say, well, if we only have two primary resources, why are, the, why are there other columns? That can play a very strategic role because if you are using this with a prospect that, that's stuck, that's not moving forward, you could ask them, well, what's your other option? What else are you considering and how does it match up? Most people aren't like you and I. Most people are not very analytical. They tend to be more emotional. Most people will pull from their prior knowledge and experiences and often be close-minded to learning new information that could cause them to make different decisions. So we need to educate them. If, if you kind of force or nudge the education along and help them understand these attributes and then help them graph out other options they may be looking at, it should seal the deal because I don't think that they're going to find another option that is as valuable as either of our two options. So just a brief paragraph introduction and then we get over into the side by side. So what's the primary difference between the two? And this is a great question for you because if you don't know now, when we talk about access to capital, that's our no upfront cost. Just so you know, access to capital equals no upfront cost, because I know we often refer to it as no upfront cost, but, but that's referring to the program as a price point versus a title. The title is access to capital. 
And then the business startup program, I've heard many of you call it all kinds of different things. Maybe you call it the 500 program or the 2500 program, but that's the price. That's not the program name. The program name is business startup. So hopefully that's clear. This is the no upfront cost. So the access to capital program, again, which means the no upfront cost option, is designed to improve the three C's. Now, when you get to the three C's, again, you and I know this like the back of our hand, but there's a lot of people that don't even know what the three C's are. So how could they even make logical and effective decisions and accessing funding if they don't know probably the most basic element of getting business funding is that business funding comes down to three things, credit, collateral, capacity. Do all loans, do all lenders require all three C's? No, no. There's some special types of funding that is only based on one of the three C's. Some are only based upon two of the three C's. Some have relaxed standards on some of the three C's. So that, that's another key fallacy that you'll have to help people overcome. Often people will want simple answers to complicated questions. And so in other words, they try to put all different types of funding options into one bucket. And that's not accurate because there's lots of different types of funding and each of those have their own underwriting. But nonetheless, the access to capital program, which you and I affectionately refer to as the no upfront cost, is designed to help improve the three C's and we guarantee them a minimum of 100,000. Let's talk about this guarantee a little bit and I know we'll get over to it over here too, but let's talk about it since it's here. When a guarantee is stated, that's a big deal. So that's a legal promise that we're making to the client. It's not a sales pitch. It's, it's a legal commitment that we're making. Now we had our attorneys draft it, so we're legally compliant. And we, I don't know if you know through this or not, but we went through a Federal Trade Commission audit, FTC. Attorneys from the FTC audited how we're presenting this, and there were no issues. No changes necessary, no fines, no penalties, not even any recommendations, because we do it right. So yes, you can guarantee a capital raise, but it has to be done in a specific way that it's legal and compliant. Ours absolutely is. So the first of the two offerings, you and I call the no upfront cost, but it's really the access to capital or funding proposal model. The other of which is the business startup program, which we've talked a lot about in the recent weeks. So that's where we're putting together resources to create a fundable business. And, and we'll go through the breakdown in a minute. So that's the, the introduction. Of course, you can, this is in words, so you can change it. You can change the, the, call to action. And again, each of you should have a landing page. We're providing those landing pages free now. Our landing page is directed to by going to fundingproposal.online. So when we give you a landing page, it's actually a bunch of gobbledygook. Do you see this in the gray box right here? That's actually the URL of the landing page you will have one that, that's similar. So the key is you, you may want to get it. You don't have to, but you may want to get a domain and then forward that domain to the URL that we give you for your landing page so it looks cleaner versus just a bunch of gobbledygook, a bunch of letters and numbers. You don't have to do that, but that's the best practice. All right, so with that being said, let's go ahead and break down the comparison, the differences between what you and I commonly call the no upfront cost program, which is truly access to capital, aka funding proposal, and the business startup program. You ready? Now, one thing to consider before we dig in is this is our paper, this is your paper. Well, what does that mean? What the hell does paper mean? Well, as a branch office, you're contracting with your clients using your contract, your paper. So frankly, you control the terms and conditions of your client agreement, including pricing. We don't. Now, there's some parameters we recommend. But just keep in mind as we're going through this, this is 
your contract, your paper, you're controlling the terms and conditions. But when you're feeding people into the no upfront cost program, they're feeding into our terms and conditions. Why do I bring that up? Well, this is stable. This column here is stable. It's always the same for everyone because it's a standardized program. There very well could be differences in how each of you implement your startup program. So it's probably not a big deal. I just want to clarify. All right, so the first item here on the comparison sheet is guaranteed funding. Let's read it. With no risk to the client, participation guarantees a minimum of $100,000 to $250,000 capital raise. Is it too good to be true? No, it's not too good to be true. We're going to work with them to become qualified. Now, how we work with them differs. What we do differs. Otherwise, it wouldn't be two different programs, right? It'd be one program. It's two different programs. So what we do is different, and we'll be able to discern that as we go through the checklist. So I'm going to pause here, and, and as I go through, I want to make sure that we're on the same page. So using the Q&A, the question and answer box, it's like a chat box of Zoom. Anyone have any questions on this first element on the comparison, the guaranteed funding? Yes, the access to capital program absolutely guarantees in writing, legally, FTC compliant, that it, every participant will get a minimum of 100000 Does that mean we can only help them get 100000 No, that's the minimum. That's the minimum. Why is that important strategically? Because you're paid, and, and I know this sheet doesn't show what you're paid, but I'll, I'll give you the, the verbal. You're paid five points of the client's capital raise for every client you refer in. You don't have to do any of the work. You don't have to get them under contract. You don't have to collect any money from them. It is simply a referral program, referring them into the free landing page that looks like fundingproposal.online. So with that being said, the guarantee is there and, and we'll do it 100% of the time. On the business startup program, do you want there to be a guarantee or not? So I, I guess this almost could be a question mark because it's up to you. If you want to provide your clients a guarantee, you can if you don't want to. You don't have to. You can always pull the language that we have in ours to make sure it's legally compliant if you do want to add it. So any questions on this first differentiator? So the truth is, there's not a difference between the two, right? There's a checkbox in both. Now, often the startup program, we're going after a larger amount. Normally, the startup program references 250 or the access to capital program is a specific 100,000 guarantee. But in either case, we don't have to stop at that amount. All right, Sparkle's asking about the performance fee. And that's a good question, but I'm, I'm gonna come back to that. So I'm not gonna dismiss your question, Sparkle, but I, I wanna talk about pricing uh, in a moment. Okay, so are we all good on guaranteed funding that it's that's an element, a contractual guarantee in both cases. However, you can change it on your contract. It's always there on ours. We good? All right. The second is no upfront cost. So th this is a mixed bag, right? Most people would rather not pay anything upfront. Therefore, I think you'll get a lot of attention in what we call the no upfront cost funding proposal aka access to capital. A lot of people will be interested in that, frankly, ignoring probably every other bullet, but just simply because there's no upfront cost. Because people that don't trust you yet, if I can highlight it properly, people that don't trust you yet don't want to give you money. So if they don't trust you, it's a lot easier to enroll them in the access to capital, the no upfront cost, because there's no upfront cost. But you notice this is blank. There is an upfront cost for the business startup program. So that's a significant differentiator, isn't it? All right, so let's move on to the next. And I see a couple more questions coming, uh, some specific questions, which are good ones we're going to get to. I'm just going to address those when we get to the bottom of this sheet. Okay, so uh, hopefully everyone's clear on no upfront cost because there's just simply no upfront cost for what we call the funding proposal no upfront cost access to capital program. 
there definitely is an upfront cost for the business startup. It's up to you. You can either charge the client $2,500 or you can charge the client just a $500 down payment and then uh, the rest is financed at 0%. But there definitely is an upfront cost. Well, why would we charge an upfront cost? That's a scam. Well, there's services being provided, right? Someone's got to pay for the services and we'll see the check boxes here in just a second, right? So people that want free are either broke or naive. So no, we're not, you and I are not going to provide a bunch of services for free because we're helping the client, right? We're not helping our business. We're helping the client's business. So yes, there's definitely an upfront cost for the business startup. It's well worth it. It's a great deal. So it's not an issue with value, but there is none on the access to capital. Thus, I think you'll find a lot of folks will want to get started with the access to capital. Then we can get them funded. Then you could turn around and bring them into the startup program if they want and need it. All right, third line here, business credit improvement. So that is an element that we work on in the startup program. What does that mean? We help them get their business credit profiles optimized with Dun & Bradstreet and Experian Business, for example. And then we uh, help them add primary trade lines so they have a strong paid X score. Why is that important? Because businesses that have a strong business credit profile are more fundable. So it's important, it's valuable, and that is an element of the startup program. It's not an element of the access to capital. It's not built in. Any questions on this line item specifically? Okay, hopefully that helps. Free commercial address and business formation. Having a true unique commercial business address is crucial for qualifying for many types of business funding. The grant also pays for the formation of your business with the Secretary of State, includes access to the Chapman Fund. So that is relevant for the startup program. Check here, no check here. Right? That's a key difference. So let's try to apply this. Let's say you're talking to a prospect and they don't have a business yet. We'll just make it real simple. They don't have a business. Not, not that they don't just have an address. They don't have a business yet. Can they enroll in the access to capital program? Yes. Yeah, they're, they're not filtered out, but they shouldn't expect that they're going to get this for free because the box isn't checked. Now, this box, of course, reflects what's in the agreement. So the agreement says specifically what we're going to do with the client. I'm summarizing on this comparison sheet what the agreement says and what we do. Hopefully that makes sense. This isn't the client agreement. Okay, so hopefully we're clear on that. Additionally, free collateral. We transfer, really transfer, $10,000 to every participant in the startup program. Startup program, check mark, no check mark. So while there is no upfront cost for the access to capital, there is the 100,000 guarantee. It does not include these three elements which are pretty significant value proposition for the startup program. But if clients want these things, then they need to pay for those things. In other words, they would probably want to get in the startup program. If they don't trust you enough in the beginning, then that's fine. Bring them into the access to capital. The access to capital, they can't lose, right? Two, two points, no upfront cost, 100,000 guarantee. They cannot lose, they cannot lose. So they can't go wrong with that then we can get them some capital, build some trust, and then they could come back to you for the startup program. So those three bullets, big deal. Now let's think about the four phases. Remember, we've talked about the four phases of the business startup program. So this really fits into phase one, this really fits into phase two, and then this fits into phase three, just so you can see that there's a tie-in to what we do and how it's depicted here. Opportunity fund. I, I feel like this is the love and hate one for some of you. Some of you love the fact that we can help clients increase their capacity. One of the three C's through the opportunity fund. So they're getting daily deposits. Some of you seem to hate that. You, you don't want your clients to get daily deposits. Hey, I'm not here to judge. It's whatever you want. But, but it is available in both uh, situations. So that is the same. This is the same. 
the points of differentiation, of course, are where there's one check, not two checks. Okay, then we scroll on down, fast results. Now, this is some pretty good wordsmithing here that you may want to consider incorporating. And I think this came from Larry. And like, yeah, Larry's on today. So Larry, has given you credit for this. Forgive me if, if it wasn't you. But I, I think what Larry or whomever <laughs> introduced this, uh, we'll just say Larry. What Larry likes to say to people is, what would you do if you had an extra 100 to 250,000 in 30 days? So between now and, and June 16th, if I could get you an extra 100 to 250,000, what would you do with it? So Larry's really good about creating relevance to the client's wants and needs. And so you may want to try that as well. Ask them that question. Because we can generate guaranteed funding through our programs. What else are they considering, right? With us, they have no risk because there's no upfront cost. They have no risk because there's a $100,000 guarantee, specifically in the access to capital. What other options do they have that, that can offer no upfront cost and a $100,000 guarantee? I don't believe, 100000 guarantee, I don't believe that there are any other options in the marketplace legal, ethical. So fast results. Uh, better yet, get your first tranche of funding typically in less than a week. And so we, we have great success stories where clients come in, we get them their first tranche right away. We talked about Mary, uh, Mary L. We'll just give you her first initial. Her first tranche, we just talked about earlier this week, if you recall, was 120000 So it's not a real big deal. It's not like that's all the funding she wanted. We're working with her on the next round, the next tranche. But her first tranche was 120000 Not bad as a starting point. So with that being said, what uh, I'll shrink this down so we can all see the whole page. And then I want to get into your questions and make sure that each of you understand the difference between what we call the no upfront cost, also called the funding proposal, also called the access to capital program. Those are all the same, just different terms, and the startup program. Because obviously they, they don't conflict. It's fine for clients to do both. Many clients do both, but you don't have to do both. Some clients just do one of the two. All right, so uh, Gilbert's asking about the business plan, and, and you're right. One of the deliverables, Gilbert and everyone else, is we create a business plan for the client and the access to capital. So that is an explicit deliverable. It's in the contract, and, and we do it. We use the same software that we used when I worked at the SBA, and then I left the SBA, became a college professor, and we continue to use that same software, and now we bought a license, or we bought a bunch of licenses for that same software. So th that's a great point. Th there are other details of things that we do. This is not meant to be a comprehensive understanding of the two programs. More so, it's it's meant to highlight the differences. But yes, Gilbert, you're correct. We build clients a business plan in the access to capital. All right. So Wit ask, does the first tranche that the business accepts affect their guarantee for additional funding. So regardless of which program, our model, and the FTC actually very much like this, is we do not require clients to accept funding offers. So we'll bring them the funding offers, or there'll be first tranche or subsequent tranches. If they don't like it, they don't have to accept it. Thus, they don't have to pay for it. So uh, that, that pivots a little bit back to Sparkle's question earlier. She had the first question that I skipped over. So performance fees. Performance fees are sometimes are called success fees. Those are paid after the client has been funded. So uh, we have a gentleman that brought on Mary that got the 120000 I, I don't remember what his success fee was. I think it was 12%. So he made around 14000 off of her first tranche. She's happy to pay it because she got over 100000 He's happy to get 14000 right away. So performance fees are paid after the client is funded, not based upon funding offers. Clients do not have to accept offers that they don't like, whether it be first tranche or subsequent tranches. 
so that way clients aren't locked in to, to deals that they don't want. Because you might have a client with it ask, well, what's my interest rate going to be? And what's the answer going to be? I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. But if you don't like the interest rate offer, that's fine. And we'll dismiss that and we'll, we'll work on another deal. So we don't know. You, you and I, none of us know what each client's interest rates will be because the lenders determine that. But we don't have to know what it will be, even though we, we couldn't possibly know what it is because it's not our decision. Because if the client doesn't like it, they say no and we move on to the next deal. All right, so I think that addresses Witt's question. And then Sparkle was asking about the performance fee. And so that's where I was kind of pivoting to. So in both models, there is a performance fee. In the no upfront cost slash funding proposal slash access to capital, there is a t flat 10% performance fee. And we split that 50-50 with you. So you're making five points, which... I mean, that's fair. You're going to make at least five grand for each person you refer in. Could be a lot more because it's linear, right? It's it's 5% of however much they receive through all their different tranches. You will make more on the startup program because you're making money up front, but there is no upfront cost for this one so that you, you can't get paid up front. And then secondly, you control what the performance fee is on the startup program. So I told you, we have a flat 10% here. We split it 50-50 with you. So you know you're going to get five points. You know you're going to get at least 5,000 from each client you refer in. I can't tell you what you're going to get here because you're determining what that is. So hopefully that goes back to answer Sparkle's question from the beginning of the Zoom. Herman asked about the Opportunity Fund. Yeah, so let's go back to the Opportunity Fund. I'll even make it larger. So what are some basic principles that, that you and I know, Herman, and, and everyone else? Well, there's three C's. So if we're trying to get a business optimized for funding, we need to be cognizant of the business's credit. I'm not talking about personal credit, the business's credit. So we can help them with that, of course. We're, we're very competent and capable of helping build their credit profile, adding trade lines. We also know that collateral matters. And depending upon their uses of funds, what they're going to spend the money on, it, it affects the calculation of collateral. But we even provide free collateral. We provide up front 10000 If they need more than 10000 we can provide a, a lot more. Uh, we have one of you on this morning, one of our branches, who just bought, I believe yesterday, an extra $300,000 of collateral yesterday. So... Uh, 10,000 minimum, and it says we can go up to 10 million. Our biggest sale to date was, of collateral was a 3 million transaction, and that was to a big law firm, a law firm in Austin, Texas. So what are we doing, Herman? We're building the three C's, business credit, collateral, and then the third C is capacity. Capacity is other, as otherwise known as cash flow. Do we have the ability to, to pay back the money that we want to borrow? Businesses have an advantage over individuals whereby in our business plan, which we create here, one of the deliverables, even though it's not shown on the sheet, it's in the agreement, we do that. So we build a business plan with financial projections. What's the relevance? Well, for businesses, we might have a pre-revenue business, but by showing the lender that we project to cash flow positively, we could get approved for funding in some cases. So in other words, the capacity, we might not have historic capacity, but we can adequately project future capacity. And that's one of the big things that we do here. That's one of the reasons why we can guarantee the 100,000 is because we get the paperwork done right. So Herman's question is, talk, let's talk about the opportunity fund. So you're different, Herman, and a lot of you are different. A lot of you have what's called global cash flow. What does that mean? Global means from multiple sources. So it could be W-2 income, could be retirement, could be disability, could be from other businesses you own. But to no surprise, most lenders, not all, because we already said not all lenders are the same and some don't use all three Cs. But in general, lenders are kind of worried about the borrower's ability to repay the debt. Kind of makes sense, right? So we can use the Opportunity Fund, Herman, to help your clients 
that don't look strong on paper in terms of their ability to repay the debt. It also improves their bank rating. So Herman, you and I have gone out teaching this, but bank ratings are a specific calculation of how strong the business bank account is. When you run into financially illiterate people, they'll always or they'll often respond, well, that doesn't apply to me. This is a new business. Well, that, that's like a big dumbass tattoo across their forehead. No, all these things matter, whether it's a new business or not. A new business needs to be credit worthy. We're going to make that happen legally and ethically. A new business needs to have collateral. We're going to make that happen legally and ethically. A new business needs to show capacity, the ability to repay the debt. We're going to make that happen legally and ethically. So the Opportunity Fund helps that, helps build bank rating, which is a calculation, improves the financials. And then again, I think some of you are so successful that you don't know how the average person lives. The average person doesn't order lobster for lunch every day like many of you do. The average person is trying to borrow money through one or both of these programs to accomplish their dreams. Well, what if they need some working capital, Herman, between now and then? Because there's a process we need to go through, usually it's a 30 to 60 day process, to get them fundable. Well, again, maybe unlike you, Herman, but a lot of people don't have a lot of money. And so the Opportunity Fund is designed to give them those daily deposits so they have working capital while we're working on the file. So again, successful people, I think, overlook the little guys. And so just because you make a lot of money, Herman, don't think that everyone else does, because not everyone else does. Some people are running really lean, really thin on cash flow. This is very valuable. But hopefully that helps you understand it better. I just, I need you sometimes to not all be such elitist and step back and look at clients from their perspective, not from your perspective. Not everyone drives a quarter of a million dollar car. Not everyone wears a $50,000 watch. There's a lot of people just trying to get their dream started and the opportunity fund can make a big difference. All right, any other questions, comments, concerns, we'll shrink this back down. So what's the purpose today? To make sure that we're all on the same page, that we understand that there are some material differences between the two programs. Both are good, both, both are great in my opinion. Both of them would stand up to other options that clients might have. And, and so let's say, Jeff, Jeff just asked a question. So let's say Jeff's talking to a prospect and, Jeff, and Jeff's prospect's like, well, I don't know, I gotta think about it. I'd say, great prospect, let's use this grid and let's map out what other options you're considering to get a guaranteed $100,000. Guaranteed, no risk. So prospect, tell me the name of the other option you're considering. Option C. I don't know what it is. We'll just call it option C. Okay, great, great. Do they offer guaranteed funding? And I mean guaranteed in a legally FTC compliant way. Is it in right? Yes or no? If yes, check mark. Okay. Now, they don't charge anything up front, do they, prospect? Because you don't want to pay anything up front, right? So then check or no check. All right. Do they help build out your business credit profile? Do they help you add trade lines for free, prospect? If so, put a check mark. Okay. Do they make sure that you have a valid, credible business in terms of the address, filing with Secretary of State, IRS, bank account, all that? Do they make sure you have that? If so, let's go add a checkbox over here for option C. If not, it stays blank. All right, prospect, you know collateral is important. You know that's the number one reason why businesses get declined for funding. Does option C, prospect, give you free collateral, legal, ethical, real assets to put on your balance sheet? If so, let's put a checkbox here. If not, we're going to leave it blank. Now, Prospect, you and I know that, that while we're working on this, having working capital to pay your bills, take care of incidental expenses, and so forth is important. So I just want to make sure, Prospect, that whatever you're considering for option C over here, they do give you daily cash deposits, right? Are, are you getting daily cash deposits from them? If not, don't check that box. And then fast results, right? Are they able to guarantee you a hundred to two hundred and fifty thousand in thirty days? Can they get you your first tranche in in less than a week? 
So if they can do those things, you check the box. So you can see the point. I just did a half ass role play. But for people that are on the fence, that's fine. Ask them to articulate the attributes of the other options they're looking at. Can you think of any other programs that delivers the value proposition that you and I offer? I'm, I'm going to ask you, yeah, yes or no. I'm going to ask for a response in the Q&A. Anthony Pettit, are you aware of any other programs that for no upfront cost offers the same value proposition we offer? Yes or no, Anthony? Arturo, yes or no? I'm asking for everyone to type into the Q&A. It's like a chat box. Bernard, yes or no? Katori, David, Donna, Dr. Davis. Eric, I don't think that there is. And I don't think anyone else, it, it's rare to go through an FTC audit and come out unscathed. And, and we did. We went through an audit. It was painful. The attorneys are smart, but they're not friendly. They wanted everything. They wanted every contract we ever signed with every client. They reviewed mountains of information. And you know what came out of it? No fines, no negative ramifications, not even a request to change. Because we hired attorneys to build this and we built it right. It's legal and it's ethical. And if anyone tells you different, they're either illogical, they're lying, or they're malicious. Our program is legal. It is ethical. And we will do what we promise to do. And we put it in writing. We put it in writing. You know, you'd be a fool to put something that's not real in writing because you'd be held accountable for it. So it's up to you. If you want to run your branch like a business, you should be generating at least 100000 a month. Just That's a fact. Even if you wanted to take the easy road and just use the free landing page that we give you, which is uh, what we call the free funding proposal slash no upfront cost slash access to capital, you're making five grand a pop. Submit in a deal a day. Mondays through Fridays, take weekends off, you're at 20, 20 times five is 100,000 a month for a side gig that, that, I don't know how you beat it, but it's up to you, right? You're the CEO of your business. We're here to help you. We want to help you make each 100,000 this month. Let us know if you need anything. If you want a copy of this, email us. We're happy to provide it to you in editable format, but it's time to go take action. We've got to stop making excuses and we need to go enroll people. We need to run a branch like a business and make money. Let us know what we can do to help you. We'll see you back tomorrow morning. Thanks. Bye.